follow-up questions, and then I'm going to ask the questions that one of the jurors had submitted uh, or Detective McCartney. Mr. Locker. During the initial interview with Mr. Lefford, was he confronted with a video study that led y'all to believe at that time, not now, but at that time, that a vehicle pulled in his driveway at 10 p.m. on the 3rd? Yes. And was he then confronted with that video study around five in the morning. He was confronted specifically that lights had turned on in the driveway, backed and went south on Garners Creek Road. And you say back, backed out and then went south? That would be the assumption, yes. Right. Mr. Crouch. Detective, after uh, reviewing the video, and you testified you did a test drive yourself? Yes, sir. And, and compared the same footage? Yes. Do you believe that it was uh, a vehicle leaving Mr. Ledford's driveway at around 5 a.m.? I do not. Thank you. And <clears throat> speaking of vehicles leaving driveways, did Mr. Smithson, the resident at 115 or 1115 Garner Street, did he leave that morning? He did leave that morning around 6 a.m. Okay. And do you know where he went? He went to um, the golf course, I believe. Okay. Did he come back? He did at some point, yes, that morning. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Detective, uh, let me ask you these questions. On page 26 of the transcript, line 16, a question has been asked of you. Did, the, did Detectives Lovell and McCartney follow up on the brown vehicle that was identified in, on that line and that page? I don't know anything further about that brown vehicle. All right. The next question is, did Detectives Lovell and McCartney ever follow up with the unidentified male on page 41 or report to the supervisor that a follow-up may be needed? Let me first ask you, and I want to make sure I'm understanding correctly, the unidentified male on page 41, do you know who that identified, unidentified male's voice was? Yes, Your Honor. That is a THP trooper that was um, relaying that information to Detective Lovell and I. And what information did he relay? That a, a male subject um, had seen something, and that was Daniel McCormick. And he was there with the trooper on the side of the road, and we were able to talk to him at that time too. And that information was passed up to a supervisor. All right, so that answers this question. Yes, All right. sir. Thank you. Based on those questions, is there anything necessary to be followed up? You may. So, Detective, uh, the first question about a brown vehicle. In, in perspective, where were you, Detective Lovell, and uh, the defendant when that brown vehicle was seen? When I looked at that page in the interview, it appears that we were somewhere near South 3rd Street, which is where the command posts were being set up. Were there lots of vehicles there? There would have been lots of vehicles there at that time, yes. <laughs> so are we talking about a suspicious vehicle or one of many? I, I, it would have been one of many. There would have been many vehicles there, but I don't remember anything about it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Walker. The information that was relayed to you from Mr. McCormick was specifically that this person had seen a child wearing pajamas consistent with Joe Clyde Daniels. That is what I wrote in my supplement police report. My memory, I don't remember what Mr. McCormick said to me, but I did write in my police report um, very soon after this happened that that is what he reported to have seen. And your memory would have been better at the time. Yes, sir. And you certainly wouldn't have written down that he said he saw a child if he said he had seen an adult, would you? I would not have. Nothing further. Mr. Crouch? Yes, sir. Thank you, Detective McCartney. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to allow Detective McCartney to sit down, and if you will pass your exhibits that you've been given individual copies of then to the bailiff, then we'll hold those for you until uh, they are necessary for future use.
Detective McCartney, unless you are on the witness list to be recalled, you're welcome to stay in the courtroom or go about your duties, whatever you'd like. While the jury's passing the notes in, uh, do you uh, have another witness ready? Yes, sir. Uh, Judge, the state calls Agent Stephen Kennard. Some people misinterpreted my statement about giving you a tour of this building. Uh, my understanding was is that since you, I talked about this place when we were in Chattanooga and talked to you about how nice it was and everything, and then you've been shuttled in through the uh, private entrance and kept in either that room or this room. And it was my understanding y'all would like to see the entire building just for curiosity or whatever, and we're proud to show it off. So we will arrange to get that done for you at some point. So. It will have to be when there's no one else here, obviously, so that you can have an, un an unfettered access to it. So, all right. All right, step right up here, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. Let the clerk place you under oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, to help you go? I do. Thank you. When, you, uh, when you're seated, if you will be sure to, st uh, to speak directly into that microphone, it'll help. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Would you state your full name for the record, please? Uh, Stephen Kennard. Thank you. And will you spell your first and last name? Uh, Stephen is S-T-E-V-E-N. Kennard is K-E-N-N-A-R-D. Thank you. Agent Kennard, where are you employed? At the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. And what's your position there? A special agent. Thank you. And how long have you been employed for the TBI? Uh, with TBI approximately uh, almost 12 years. Thank you. And were you an agent in 2000, uh, April 4th, 2018? Yes, sir. And were you assigned to assist with the Joseph Daniels investigation? Yes, sir, it was. And at the time, it was a missing persons assignment when you were assigned? Yes, sir. All right. And do you know about what time you came to Dixon County on April 4th? I believe I arrived in Dixon County approximately 1 or 2 o'clock p.m. Yeah. 8 p.m.? P.m., yes, sir. And what was your first detail? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, upon arrival in Dixon County, uh, we were still formulating search plans, and so I was kind of put to the side to help with search teams, put search teams together of local departments that were coming to help for the searches. Okay. Later in the evening, did you go to the residence of the defendant? Yes, sir, I did. What was the purpose for going to his residence? Uh, to interview uh, the parents. Okay. And what type of interview did you conduct with the defendant? Just a regular uh, consensual non-custodial interview. Non-custodial interview? Yes, sir. What, what's a non-custodial interview? It simply means it's a voluntary interview that where they are not in custody. They're free to leave at any time. Uh, there's, they do not have to be there. It's on there. You know, that's voluntary. Okay. And the defendant allowed you into his home? Yes, sir, he did. Uh, he was not under arrest? No, sir, he was not. Uh, no threats? No force? No, sir. It was a consensual interview? Yes. And did you record this interview? I, I did not. It was recorded. I did not record it. It was recorded, and, and you reviewed a copy of the recording? Uh, yes, sir. And who all was present for this recording? Uh, also with myself was Special Agent Andrew Graves with TBI and Detective Trevor Daniel with the Dixon County Sheriff's Office. And when we listen to the audio recording, we will hear those voices of, of Detective uh, Trevor Daniels and also Agent Graves? Yes, sir. And As well as you? Uh, yes, sir. Do you know about what time this interview started? I believe we started at approximately 9 o'clock p.m. All right. And at this time, I'm going to move a copy of the interview as the next exhibit. We're at 124. 125. All right. What was 124? 124 was the paper delivery. Your Honor, we also have transcripts to assist the jury in listening. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, same process. We're going to give you a transcript to follow along with on um, this audio, but when the con this witness's testimony is concluded, we'll take it back up from you. If you make notes on it, just make sure that you'll be able to recognize your own handwriting.
Okay, Mr. Etheridge, if you would start the audio recording. Detective Kennard, just so we can all be on the same page. Yes, sir. There was some background noise before the actual interview begins. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And just referring to the transcript, are we on page two, approximately line 14? Yes. All right. Where does he like to go? That's a good question because when he takes off, he's usually somewhere in the neighbor's area. He's not in any specific place. He likes church. Um, he likes to go to church. Where's that? Uh, Hillview Baptist. Is anywhere close? Or? It's, it's not it's anything walking distance. I think you know to walk to no. him. No, no. No, it's decent. No, no, no. But it's on Saturday there. Yeah. About past the Buckner Park area. Uh, we know he's nonverbal. How would he react to his name being called? If I called his name, he may come up. He may not. And if... Now, if, the, if uh, Grandma or my, my stepmom were to say his name, he would, she would, she would, he would probably come up to her 
Okay. And um, as well as with my wife, you know, if, if she called out his name, then he would come up to her too. Sometimes he would, sometimes he won't. So I just. That leads right into the next question. Will the child respond to a particular voice and you're saying your stepmom? Yeah. What's her name? Belle. Belle? Yeah. Her her name is Nyla, but she goes by Belle. What's her real name first? Nyla Belle Daniels. Does he have a favorite song or toy or anything? His favorite stuffed animal is Olaf, which is which we found in the house. So he did not take that. Um, his favorite song, it really just depends. The one I've seen him dance to the most is a, a song called Anthem by Good Charlotte. And he likes uh, some older music, like the uh, Mellow Yellow song. I mean, I don't know how you would know this list. Can he read or write anything? He can write some. Can he, his, can he write his address, phone number, or anything like that? No. Does, do you know if he knows any of that? I do not. We we try to tell him, but he just just doesn't want to, just just doesn't want the information. Does he know y'all's name, like besides mom and dad? No. Is there anything he specifically does not like? He gets angry when he doesn't get his way. Well, that's most kids I know. Yeah. Um, Stuff that he does not like, that's a good question. Um, Crystal would know more on that one because when I'm home, I'm usually playing with them. What about anything that triggers his behavior, you know, bad behavior, any specific thing like sound like, whatever? Uh, I wouldn't say certain sounds, but. Um, if, the, if it's too loud, he'll get angry. Okay. Or sometimes, now this, this happens too. Just because he likes it? Yeah. Okay. So it's vice versa on that one. It's really odd. So if he heard a bunch of sirens or something like that, or helicopters and stuff real loud, how would he react to that? Knowing him, he'd probably be scared, or he may not have any kind of um, effect at all on him. Okay. What about when he gets hurt or injured? How does he react? When he gets hurt, he'll point to where he's hurting, and um, and he'll you know he'll look like. Take, you know, if he needs to go to the doctor, we'll take him to the doctor. We'll just get him banding on the you know, situation. But uh, most of the time, is he, is he one that maybe cries a lot over anything, gets cut, hut, knocked down, or whatever? Or is he a tough kid? I mean, handles a lot of pain real well. He can handle some pain, uh, but if it's really, really forceful, he'll he'll start crying. Okay, so normal reaction, maybe. Yeah. How, how does he react when somebody touches him? When it's when it's just us in his house, he, he doesn't, you know, push us away or anything like that. Although, when I'm, I'm holding his hand, he does not want me to hold on to his hand uh, when, when we go places. What about a stranger? I don't think he would. I don't think he would what? I don't think he would actually accept that. Let a person let a stranger touch him? He may not. He may just run away from him if he doesn't know him. Because if he doesn't know him, he's not going to come up to him. Would he fight him if somebody... If someone tries to... Or... This, 
someone is trying to forcefully kick him off, he'll start kicking. He doesn't have any medical ID tag or anything like that, though. No. Does he have any sensory, medical, or dietary issues or requirements? No. Special foods or anything like that? He doesn't take uh, any. He doesn't take any life-sustaining medication. Uh, the Ritalin is just for his ADHD. Right. Okay. Does he get upset easily? Yes. He does. He can get upset easily. Um, he can be really. He can get really frustrated if he's trying to do something and it's not working out for him. And he'll get really frustrated. What do you do to calm him down? Um, I either show him how, or I just do it for him. In most of the cases, it's just me doing it for him, so. Does he know sign language or anything? A small amount. Small amount of sign language? Small amount, not a lot. He you knows stuff like more. And then some other stuff too. Um, Crystal would know more because she works. She has to work with him on that every now and then. Does she know it? She doesn't know it completely, but she knows like the stuff that they gave her, like the, you know, the little hand, you know, pamphlets right. that they do sometimes. And, um, she knows some of that, what that means, so, okay. <laughs> I don't know that. 
familiar with the area. Is he familiar with this area? Did y'all go out, walk in, or hikes or anything like that? So, for a couple times, I actually did take him for on a walk with a few, a couple of us in the summer, and it was it was just this area here from Garner's Creek down third to Old Garner's Creek and back around this coast back walk. Okay. That's as far as y'all ever traveled outside walking around here? That's, that's, yeah, that's the first time we walked this around this area was there, so. I know he's just getting over what? Pneumonia. Pneumonia? Now, that March the 7th, that's when y'all took him for the pneumonia? No, that was his routine checkup for his eye. Uh, so did y'all carry him somewhere for the pneumonia? We did. Where? That would be Horizon. Here in Dixon? Yes. And do you know when he did that? Let's see, uh, yeah, his eye is Friday, not last Friday, but Friday before. Okay, so... Right. So it's day before, last Friday the 29th, Sunday Friday before that. Yeah, Friday before that. Yeah. Because of the, uh, the next day, no one got RSV, so we were going to go to Vanderbilt. So we took it to the horizon and they gave him some medications. What did they do? They gave him the moxicillin. Okay, anything else? Um, no, okay. just moxicillin. And have you taken all of that medicine? He took all of it. The 10 days you're supposed to take it. He mm -hmm. took the 10 days and then we threw the remainder away. Okay. And I guess he was better? Yeah, he was a lot better. So, so, yeah. so overall, health-wise, he was in good condition. Right. And physically, you know, he's fine. Yeah, physically he's fine. He, he doesn't have any kind of um, physical issues. Has he ever been diagnosed with any psychological problems? Other than ADHD? No. Okay. Does he have any side effects from his Ritalin? No. Okay. And we've already discussed what you did, you know, prior to us getting here today. And I even had a couple of my detectives ride you around and show them where you drove to, right? Right. Uh, do you know of any of your family or friends that went out looking and didn't tell us what they did or where they went that we might need to know about? Um, my, co my cousin Jason. What's his last name? Blackburn. Okay. Vince Richardson. Vince. Vince. Like Vince. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Vince Richardson. And um, they and other family members, they they came to the search party, and they they didn't tell me anything. So they, they actually come down and volunteer on our teams. Okay, so we know what they did. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, there was a guy that came up that was my uh, my stepmom's nephew that came up like tonight after the search party was over with and asked about what to search for. Did he come to the house? Yes. Do you know his name? Billy. Billy Nicholson. N I C H O L O. Yeah, S N I C H O L S O N. Yeah. What did you tell him? I told him, yeah, I asked them before doing anything. 
Can you tell him where he got to? Want to get to us? I just didn't know where you were. I yeah. think he may have saw you guys, so. Okay. Did he say he went looking anywhere or anything? Or? No, I haven't heard back from him. Okay, anybody else? No. Um, I had my stepsister come, but she she wasn't able to come to the department, so. Okay. Um, uh, so I know you did. Did your wife, did she never went with you riding around, did she? No. Um, Alex did. Who's Alex? That's my, that's my stepson, but I don't know him since he was like eight months old. The one that's here? Yeah. Alex rode with you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just it was pointed in the weird 
it was pointed towards the two doors that not not um, not parallel to the um, to the to the, to the sofa mm -hmm. but it was more like how this bed is sitting right here mm -hmm. but it was towards that uh, towards okay. the doors yeah okay uh, those two doors that go into that, is it double doors that go into that yeah. bedroom? Yeah. Do they stay closed when he's in there sleeping? No. Uh, they stay open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, those checked, doors, so those doors were open when you went out there? Yeah. 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 And okay. um, I, I checked, I checked every room. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, they called out the house and I didn't find them. Mm -hmm. So I got Crystal up and we went outside and we, we looked. To the obvious locations like the neighbor's yard the, and the next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. I looked over there and then I took the car and went up to the end of the road and turned around, came back, and didn't see anything. Um, okay, Tim, I'm going to slow you up just a little bit before we get that far. Um, was he freely able to get out, open the doors, or was there any sort of locks on the doors? There was or locks on the doors. Okay. The back door. The back door we came in. Okay. Why is that padlock on the door? To the right hand. Specifically. It was closed, clasped. Yeah. And that's how you keep it at night. And you're certain that it was closed when you guys went to sleep. Yeah, so she checked it and actually locked it, so. Okay. Okay, so the door was locked. Um, when you got up and saw that he was not in his room, what was the state of that door? How, was that? How did you find that the door? The door was closed, but the lock was not, and I could not find the lock. Okay. So the lock was not on the door, it was not on the latch, um, but the door was closed itself. Yeah. So it had been Does he have any, in his thought process, does he know how to open that door, know how, I mean, open that lock? Does he know how to, uh, I'm mean, assuming it's a key lock, just like a regular right. catalog, right? right? Does he know how to, to open that lock? Does he have any idea that he would be capped? No. Is it reasonable to think that he right. would be able to open that door? Right. I, he just seen me, he has seen me unlock it. Okay. And so, the, the, the issue there is that he may have figured out how to unlock it. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he also knows where I put the key at. Where do you put it? It was on, on the mantle. I put it on the mantle. Okay. Did it just sit out open on the mantle? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he, so he did this, he knew where the key was, that he would be able to potentially, and is that lock elevated? Yes. Okay. So the, are you thinking that that coffee table was over there, moved, that he was using it to stand on, or? That's what I'm thinking. Was it close, was it next to the door, close to the door? Um, that it was not close to that door, so because it was so the TV's right here, mm -hmm. the back door was right here, mm -hmm. the coffee stand, the coffee table was right here. Okay, so it was moved maybe even further to the right than where it normally is. Yeah. But it was different when than how you guys normally have. Correct. Okay. <laughs> and the um, the door, which was not, it, was, it wasn't open. Last time this happened, the door was open, mm -hmm. and he was found, the neighbor had found him. Mm -hmm. Did that happen at night as well? Or was it just that up? was in the morning mm -hmm. that it happened, yeah. She, um, the neighbor said he was looking around precariously, so she grabbed him and brought him back over here to us. Does he know the neighbors? He, not really. Uh, that one, the only reason why she knows about him is because of, you know, that and the neighbor across the street might know him too from him, you know, mm -hmm. being seen throughout the yard. So, was, have any of these times when he got out, was that, was he able to unlock that himself or is this potentially the first time he's ever actually unlocked the back? First time I've sort of seen him unlock the door, um, I've never seen him actually do it. Mm -hmm. um, Crystal said that one day when she was home, he had taken a chair and was trying to actually unlock the door. The key was in the padlock, from what she said. So, how long ago was that? The door? I don't know. She would have to tell you on that. Okay. Okay. So that was the only time he ever actually actually tried to unlock the door yeah. and get out. Okay. Um, okay. So he's 
so the door's pulled shut. Um, any of the other times that he's gotten out, I know you spoke about it a couple of other times. Were those all during the daytime, during daylight hours? Yes, and when he, when he escaped the first time, that's when we put the padlock on the door because we were trying to prevent this from happening. Was that the time when you two or the early on time that you said that he was out in the yard? Yeah, last, last time was about, I'm going to say about six months ago is the last time it happened. Okay. I was not say and that's when we decided to go ahead and buy the padlock, buy the lock. And oh, okay, so it was, it was the last time that this had happened. Was it? Was yeah. The time about yeah. Okay. okay, so he sleeps in there with Alex. Is that right? Yeah, he, normally when when my he has a he has a, this attraction. He has this he's a, it's like a you know it's not like loving attraction or anything like that. It's more like he's a bike. You know, you know how people have an attraction to one item, mm -hmm. like they absolutely love that item. That's how he's with. Is a uh, nanny. With his what? With uh, with with my stepmom. Oh, okay. So when she's not here, usually my aunt and Noah sleep with him. Well, that was not the case last night. And then, and then this happens. I just okay. I'm just trying to figure out where you could be. You know. Sure. Sure. So. He usually sleeps with Noah and your stepmom? Uh, he usually sleeps with, uh, when she's not here, usually with all, all four of them sleep in that bed. Um, Alex, Noah, and Joyce and Joe sleep in that king size bed. They can all fit out of that, yeah. And, uh, but we just, you know. Okay, but last night it was just. Alex and Joe. Okay. Has he ever slept in there with just Alex before? Yes, and he, he's never, he doesn't do this usually. Um, he doesn't have any problems with sleeping with Alex? No, because we've had, we, they've slept back there in their room before, okay. and we've had no issues. So that's not something that would upset him necessarily. Right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so. Where's here at the house when you got this morning? Me, Crystal, Alex, Noah, and Aunt Joycey was all here. Aunt Joyce? Yep. Is she up there now? She's in the bed. No way. Okay, so you said something about that he had a, he went to bed at 8, Alice went to bed at about 9, um, and you went to bed at 10, Crystal was up a little bit later than that, yeah. maybe 11 or so. You say he got up and peed in the floor. Yeah. Is that something that he's done before? Yeah, yeah, that's, okay. you know, I, it's nothing, nothing, you know, unusual okay. or anything like that. It's just something that he, you know. He, he does it every now and then. He'll just pay him for it. Okay. He, he has, you said he has a, ADHD, is that right? Does he have any other dis disabilities or anything? Um, the doctor, the, if I could find the, the um, actual notes, um, they, they, they tested him for autism. I didn't read the paper because for some reason no one wanted me to read it. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But uh, Crystal said it said autism on there with ADHD. The problem is, it's like, I, I, I just don't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I, I don't know why he, he, he wants to run away like this for. And it's yeah. not just, it's not just, you know, you know, every now and then, it's like, when I come, when I go to work, my fear is he's going to run away from school. He's going to take off during recess and nobody's going to be able to find him. Has he ever run away from school? No, not that I know of. I have never, they've never told me anything like that. <laughs> because when he was, when he was a baby, like, um, I said, well, I was about, about two years old. That's when he started having problems with going out to 
door, they would have to find it. Right. And how many, you maybe said this earlier, how many times has he done that? Several. Sorry, so the first time was moving around to how many um, total? I want to say 10, 15 times. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like, it's not like, you know, all of so much on appearance is kept on. So it's in a situation where if he sees that door open, he'll go for it? Yeah. Okay. And it's just a, he just wants to be outside, wants to be, is there something that is attractive to him outside, you know, I, or is it? I don't know. When he gets outside, does he just kind of, what does he do when he gets outside? Does he try to get, get away, or does he just get out there and kind of, Mill around or kind of basically um, mellow, mellowing around. Mm -hmm. um, one time I did see him play with his neighbor's toy um, when I found him. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you said he likes, has an attraction to water. Yes. Um, anytime when he's gotten out previously, has he ever gone to any of these surrounding little ponds or anything? Has he ever made his way over to this one good neighbor or anything that's close? The uh, crystal, the one that Crystal told me about when he went out to have uh, something all was managed to get it out of the house and they couldn't find him. Mm -hmm. He was in a dish full of water. Okay. And he was crying and they got him out and brought him back to the house. Well, this is, that was my understanding. Mm -hmm. that, so we don't know. But you think that you say he likes water though? He has an attraction to water. Yeah, that's one thing. He has another attraction to water because he'll. Um, I've seen him be in this this bathtub here, mm -hmm. and one 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 day they had to um, break break into the bathroom by getting the door handle off um, off the door mm -hmm. because he was flooding the bathroom while he was in the bathtub. He had locked himself in and just kept the water on. Yeah, that thing. Okay. He doesn't pay in the bathtub though. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't fight it anything like that. Or no. Um, when we get in the bath, he doesn't fight or anything. He just and sometimes he he just has like a. And when I find him in those situations, when the, there's water everywhere, it's funny. It's the hottest setting. Yeah. Like it's just it's hot water. No cold. No warm. Just hot. Does he, does he know how to swim? Has he ever been swimming or anything? No. Never swimming. Never been exposed to that. That's uh, the incident where he was, where he's being on the floor, you said that's a, that happens every once in a while. How, how often does that happen? Um, I want to say about once a month. So it's okay. nothing, you know, unusual for me to see. You know, how does he react when he does that? Is there anything that triggers that? No, uh, he starts laughing. Think it's just kind of big funny type thing. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he, and I don't want to insult his intelligence or anybody else's, but he knows where to use the bathroom and everything. Yeah. Does that have issues with that? No. Okay. Uh, but he doesn't have issues with using the bathroom. Okay. So okay. does he get does he get trouble when he does the the you know, the floor thing? I don't get what he's doing. Yeah. Was he? Is there any normal discipline with that? Would he have any reason to be scared after that? You know he's going to get punished or anything like that? No, he just, he was just laughing. Okay. He was just laughing. He, and we don't, we don't punish him for that stuff. We just say, hey, you're not supposed to do that. And that's all we do. Mm -hmm. We don't, and last night I didn't, you know, such a, I just told Alex, just don't worry about it. Just, you know. Hey, who got in there and addressed that? If who got in there and cleaned it up and addressed that? Was um, it you or your wife or? I didn't clean it up, actually, because, it was just, it was, I was just making sure that he was okay, mm -hmm. and then you know, he just eventually did, you know, go to the bathroom, but because he peeled the floor and then went to the bathroom, so. Okay. And then um, he, uh, he got back to bed and went back to sleep. And this morning, um, I went back to sleep. And that was about what time? That was about 12. Okay. And Crystal got up about 1, made sure he was okay. Okay. And she saw, saw him in the bed and saw he was sleeping and then came back in here and went to sleep. And I assume Alex was in there sleeping as well. Yeah. Was everybody else? You guys are in here. Y'all see the door closed? Yes. Um, there in that room with the door open, where does uh, Android sleep? Back there. Is that kind of isolated too? Yeah. Is it reasonable to think that he could get out of the house without anybody hearing anything? 
that door is right next to our room so we can hear it. Mm -hmm. And normally when someone opens the door and closes the door, we can hear it, but this exit door that goes out. Yeah, the one we can. Because okay. we hear a lot of people slam that door. Mm -hmm. Well, we, and he slams the door, so he did not slam that door. Okay. So I said, yeah. Okay. You didn't hear the door at all. Mm -hmm. uh, is it normal for you guys to be up and down in the evening with him? And the reason I asked that, I didn't know if you'd be any more tired than you normally were. I mean, you said you were up, you kind of woke up, you finally got to bed, got to bed around 11 or 12. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but you guys didn't hear anything. Is that normal for you guys not to hear anything? Um, we didn't hear anything, and it's normal for us, you know, to to not hear anything. But, you know, when he's sleeping. Right. And um, but this is, you know, does he ever get up in the night and wander around inside the house? Yes, he does. Yes, he does do that. And you guys hear him when he does that, or yeah, because we we'll both like the pots and pans and play with the I play with the um, like the. Uh, Goods. Okay. We'll play with that or we'll play with his toys, wants to watch TV, so we'll turn the TV on. Y'all try to put him back to sleep or do you just let him play or how's that going? How do you deal with that? Um, we just kind of stay up until he goes back to sleep. Or we'll wait till school, you know, is back in session and we'll just send him off to school. So you just if he's up sometimes to so stay up? And, and another issue is if he, what bothers me is the fact that he can stay up for a long, long period of time. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, it's eight, eight hours, you know. He doesn't have it, you wouldn't say he has a regular sleep. No. So, no. no. Okay. Has he been having, and some of these questions I don't want you to think, we just got to, for the totality of things and for to cover all bases, we gotta ask all these questions. So I don't want to upset you with any of this stuff, but we do have to ask it so we can say we asked it, okay? And so I don't want you to think anything about these, but just so we can say we did. But <clears throat> has he had any? Did he get along with his siblings? Yeah, he, he gets along with them. Um, you know, every now and then he'll he'll have some type of like thing where he'll start taking toys away from Noah, mm -hmm. and Noah will start crying. How old is Noah? He is three. Okay. And we don't have, he doesn't do this, so right. he's, when he goes to sleep. What about with Alex? Do they, what's their relationship like? Um, they try to play with each other. And Alex is how old? Eight. Eight, yeah. And <clears throat> sometimes I have to tell Alex to play with Joe because he just won't do it. I say, like, please go play with him. Because he's either sad or he you need someone to play with. Right. Does he ever get upset with him? Does he ever get in? I know I know siblings get fights, so aside from the regular stuff, but do they ever get into physical mm -hmm. altercations, anything like that? No. Uh, <clears throat> does anybody else in the family discipline the children, him or any of the other children? Whether it's Aunt Joyce or... We don't or we don't. What we do with Joe is because of his because of his disabilities. We tell him, you know, don't you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't scream at him. We don't spank him. Um, is it pretty calm in this house normally, or is it? There's a lot of noise that goes on. That I, when I when I you know I've been out of work for about a month and a half now, mm -hmm. but um, and. Since I've been here, it does get quite noisy. Um, Aunt Joyce is deaf, is, has hearing problems, so she has to speak louder than, okay. than most people. Mm -hmm. So um, the TV stays on constantly with some type of, um, you know, like cartoons or something, sure. or something like that. So it's noise like that, but I'm talking about you guys yell a lot. Like so, and what I mean by that is, you know, some families are just yellers, and some families are really soft spoken. And so my you know, my dad has. <laughs> has an issue with yelling at your, people. Your dad does? Yeah. And me and my wife sometimes get into really heated arguments where I know they don't want to be around her anymore. <laughs> right. so, um, so, okay. yeah, he lives here, but he, he's, not, he's, like, he's not here all the time. Okay. So. And he's not currently here? No. Okay. When was the last time he was here? Uh, he was here on Monday. 
Okay. And, you know, I, there was nothing that went, went on Monday, um, except for Joe was, what was so weird was he said he wanted to go back in the house. He didn't want to go with us to take him down the truck stop. So he said, no. I said, you don't come with us. He said, no. And you, you want to go back in the house? He shook his head. I said, okay, well, let's take, let's take you back. Then. As soon as we left the yard. So I don't know if this that triggered this somehow, and he's trying to go to the truck stop. Mm -hmm. So that. Who was he here with when he stayed here? Um, Crystal, Joyce, Alex. No. Oh, okay, so your wife was here with yeah. you when you left. Yeah. So my my feeling is he's trying to go down to the truck stop. Okay. Has um, there been any recent, have you guys had any recent issues, recent arguments, recent, you know? Yeah. Uh, one of the basketball games on Saturday, and um, he was cussing at the TV. Mm -hmm. How does uh, Joe react to that? He gets scared. Does he? Yeah. He does get scared of that. I just remember that. He does get scared of that. When so, people are yelling? Yeah. Okay. There wasn't any yelling going on necessarily that night. You guys didn't yell at him for no. anything. No. No. Cause him to get scared, right? Um, okay. Does your What's your dad's relationship with, him, with the kids? I mean, is it... Do you have a decent relationship with them? Do you interact with them? He tries to, okay. but uh, sometimes, you know, he, he speaks really loudly. Mm -hmm. Is it the normal talk that he's loud? Or? Um, sometimes he gets really loud. Sometimes he'll be, you know, like just being here like right now, mm -hmm. kind of just normal. <laughs> and the reason why I was thinking, you know, about, I know, about the interstate deal is because I went down there to see if I could find him anywhere, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he could be around that area or not because because he, if he is, you know, around that area down there near the interstate mm -hmm. where Love's truck stop is on on one sixty three, if he somehow got lost, mm -hmm. and is scared, and it's, but you wouldn't think that he was not even down there, would you? You said you think near the area very well, but you wouldn't. The only thing I can think of is. Is if because we he's been down the area a lot like he's been we we drove 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 truck stop, up, truck stop. Mm -hmm. he's seen the road because um, we put him in the truck once to go down there and we, you know took him out of the truck and put him in the car so um, he that's my my guess is that he might be somewhere down that area and he's probably um, somewhere. In that area as well, so I'm gonna check there too. Yeah, well, we're definitely checking everywhere. I mean, we're doing a super, super thorough search as best we can. So we're, we're definitely working for that. Um, have there ever been any any custody issues with the children, in particularly? But you guys had. Well, again, I don't mean again. I don't mean to insult you. And I don't want right. to. Right. And I'm not saying that to say the chat, but I didn't know. With Noah and Joe, we've had no custody issues. Okay. With Alice? Yes. Okay. That with what's the issue there? There was a custody issue, but that's been taken care of though. Okay. Like where um, Crystal had given had give temporary custody over to Deborah and James Rosenbaum. That was two thousand eleven. Who were they? Um, they were they were the well Jack Crystal Graham, which their siblings, they, 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 they grew up with them, they took care of them. And Crystal went with um, their foster grandmother, and they and Jack and Wayne stayed with Debbie and Jim as, um, over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, now I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is something that you might want to look into or not, or, or what, but. Uh, the other day that I didn't see this because I didn't, I did not see it, but others did here in this house. Well, they saw a red Ford pull up to the driveway mm -hmm. and then turn around and it was going back and forth. Mm -hmm. What kind of Ford car truck? It was a 
Uh, I think it was just, I think it was a car. That's what they said. It was just a car, it wasn't a truck. When was it? Sunday? Who's that? My Aunt Joyce. My Aunt Joyce uh, saw that. My dad, my, I think my dad may have saw it too. And, uh, they, um, I don't know. And then the, the, the other clue was uh, Jack said that Deborah, Deborah and Kenny bought a new red car. And, uh, but they have no connection to Joe, right? I mean, there's. Debbie, Deborah knows Joe. She knows where he lives. She knows um, how, when, you know, when he was born mm -hmm. because she was at the hospital the day that he was born. And she again is his Crystal's, somebody that grew up with Crystal. Someone that I said name, but somebody that grew up with her. Somebody that took care of her brothers okay. for a long time. I mean, is there any reason to believe that she would have any interest in taking and taking Joe? I don't know. Where does she where does she live? Eno Road, from what I've been told. Eno Road? Yeah. E N O. You familiar with that? You get a can? Yeah. That's what I've been. Not too terribly far away. What's her last name? Her last name? I know her I know her last name used to be Rosenbaum, but it changed to Bybee? B Y B E E. She married? Yeah, she was married to somebody else who's blind. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. When was the last time you, they were over here? Oh, um, she has been over here since 2013. Okay. Since the, uh, and is that what they went into those custody issues with? Yeah. Ads? Yeah. Okay. And that situation was Crystal was giving her temporary custody of Alex? Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah, we finally was able to get that resolved to court, and she was able to get full custody. Is that Alex your son? No. Okay, so he's <clears throat> from his mother thought. Yeah. Is that somebody that's with, with her or with her seeing the picture at all? Or no. no. Okay. Well, you don't even know where he's at. Okay, I got you. Okay. Joe and Noah, your children? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, you say he's... His only familiarity, familiarity with the area would be a couple of walks that you guys have taken around here. Correct. But you say you've driven down to the truck stop multiple times. Why do you guys go down there just to go down and look at the trucks? You guys go down there to the store? or uh, We go down there to take, um, take, I go down there usually to drive my dad to the truck because that's where he parks his truck is the most truck stop. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, sometimes, you know, my stepmom was with him. And, they go out on the road together, which I wish she was here right now. You got Yeah, I wish they were both here right now. I think he probably would have done this. Why is that? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's an attraction. Like, he's so attracted to them, it's almost like, yeah. So, my guess is that he's trying to find them. Did your stepmom live here as well? Yes. She does. What's her name? No, I have a Bell Daniels. Okay. They're, they're called Bell though. Okay. Um, and they all stay back in. Where's their room when they stay here? Back to the back of the King's House bedroom is where they Oh, they stay in that bed with them? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. You think they were there and they were family, wouldn't they? Okay. Uh, Anybody else in your family that has any issues, um, and, I, and I, know this, I don't want to put you in a difficult spot, but again, we got to ask these things. All right. Um, just so we can say that we ask them about all their faces. Uh, have any, has Crystal had any issues with the kids? Has, you know, there been any, has she been under a lot of stress, or have you been under a lot of stress with these kids lately, anything that would? No, I haven't seen it. I, I haven't seen, you know, a lot of stress, you know, it's been, you know, your typical everyday, no stress, you know, just playing, make sure the kids are fed, make sure they have a bath, and sure, um, make sure they're taking their medicine, obviously, and make sure, sure you know. Is he in school? You, you were getting up to take him to school, is that right? Yeah. He yeah, was on school today. Yeah, he, he was on school, school yesterday. Right? Yes, he did school yesterday. Okay. Do you have any reason to believe, 
anything at all, any reason to believe that that something has happened to him, as opposed to him just getting out the door, uh, and walking off. There was a guy, um, one of the um, police officers I was talking to. I asked him if he's heard anything that's been uh, you know, out of out of the, uh, out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. He said there was a witness who came up. That they stopped, or he stopped, and said that he saw a boy in the yard in the middle of the night walking on mm -hmm. in the yard, thinking that, no, wouldn't you find it odd if this person told you that that was something that was, you know, ordinary in the middle of the night? Sure. It sounds like to me, whoever that person is knows where he's at. That's just my take on it. Because no one would say, oh, it's just, you know, it's normal for a four or five year old child to be out in the middle of the night. Is that normal? Mm -hmm. That's not normal. Right. He could have at least stopped and come up to the house with him and knock on the door and say, hey, do you know who this is? Right. But that was not fun. Remember which officer told you that? I can't remember his name. I think uh, it was Dixon County Sheriff's officer, and then uh, there was another lady, a really tall lady. Um, I don't know her name either, but she came in and said uh, that she heard the same. That they, that's what the information they got as well was that. So um, my guess is that he's somewhere around this area, whoever that person is. Um, so nobody's nobody's having any issues. Nobody has any issues with the children, no particular, none of the adults in the house. No. Do you, do you have any reason to believe that any other adult in this house has anything to do with his disappearance? No. Do you have any reason to believe that? Uh, any other siblings, any siblings in this house having, would have anything to do with his disappearance. No. Nobody is overly physical with anybody. There's nobody you've never seen any, or have you ever seen any instance where you've seen, whether it's Alex or whomever, snap on Joe and, and show, you know, exhibit some sort of fit of rage or anything? Have you ever seen that? No. Have you ever had that? Have I done that? Have you ever done that? I have a very snappy temper, so I've done it a couple times. Yeah. Um, I regretted all of it. Sure. With Joe specifically? Yeah. And what would, you know, what's been the situation? Uh, it's just, you know, just some of the things he was doing, you know, I, I didn't understand what was going on at the time. And, and I can understand, you know, he's a, his ADHD intentionally is autistic, or I think said the doctor said he was, he had some sort of autism, whatever, to whatever degree, you know, their behavior is sometimes, you know, they don't, can't always regulate their behavior, so what they do is, is very trying to the normal person, you know, it's, it's has a normal realm of behavior, so you're constantly correcting this child, you're constantly disciplining them, I, I completely understand, but uh, I think anybody could, that that stuff ratchets up your, you know, makes that quick temper. It makes that, uh, you know, it, it creates a situation where you're more apt to snap on somebody or yeah. um, <clears throat> you're more apt to it's something, do something that you've been told to do a, a hundred times and do it anyway and just laugh about it. I mean, you know, did, did something like that happen where, where, you know, he did something and somebody in this house snapped on him and did something? Yeah, that's happened. Yeah, you know, that's happened. When was the last time or when did that happen? That's, it's been a, it's been a while, it's been a while, so I can't remember what last time happened, but we've, um, when we found out, you know, everything was going on, you know, with him and got him tested and all that good stuff, um, it was before that, and we need to just, you know, just discipline him in a certain way. When did you find out that he had it, how long ago did you say that was, that he, that you, uh -huh. that he was diagnosed? I'm going to say it was October. 
just this last October, so six months ago, ish, seven months ago. I'm gonna say by October, September, some somewhere, somewhere in that in that timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did that happen last night? Did anything like that happen last night? No. You know, you lost it. Nothing like that happened last night. Nothing like that. The only thing that I did was like I said, you want a cake. Mm -hmm. So I said, I just tell us so nicely, hey, if you want cake, you gotta finish your, your food. Mm -hmm. When you finish this food, you get some cake. Mm -hmm. This is the dinner time? Yeah. Okay. So we did. <clears throat> I don't know if he got angry about that or not, but. But you had to give him what he wanted, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It wasn't a situation where somebody lost a temper. Right? No. Okay. Um, you know. We all, and you guys, nobody more than you guys wants to, wants to find this little boy. Right. And, and, we want to, and we want to make sure that we ask all these questions. Um, <clears throat> and I don't want you to take offense to this, but Joe, did you have anything to do with this little boy's experience? So, have you done anything to him or caused any, you know, anything to happen to him after the fact? <coughs> Is everything that you told us been accurate and true? Yes. You actually 100% positive. Yes, sir. In your family. Just okay. was scared. <clears throat> sure. Well, I, I, and I understand. And I understand. And everybody wants to, everybody wants to find him and, and make sure he's safe. And, and uh, when I say nobody more than you guys. But we, we would be doing our jobs. We didn't ask these tough questions right. and, and make sure that we cross those, you know, cross those bridges. Okay. Um, are you guys, how sure are you on the time frame of last night as far as, uh, when your wife went to bed, and you said, you said that you went to bed around 12 o'clock, she came up to about 1 o'clock. How, is that kind of a loose time frame there, or I mean, did she know, no, I was in bed about 1 o'clock? Uh, I, I know I was in bed at 10 because that's, I, usually by now, obviously, right. usually. But um, you were back up for when you needed, right? Yeah, yeah, that was 10, that was 11.32. Okay. Something like that. I got up and you know, you know we got back to sleep and all that stuff. And you know, I don't know when she got up to check on him, so I can't tell you the time on that because I was already asleep when she got up and checked on him. So, okay. But do you think the one o'clock that's just from what she has said? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, anything else when you got up? Did you do anything out of your normal routine? Is that what you normally do? Are you the first one up normally? Yes, I'm using the first one up in the house, and I'm using the first one to, um, you know, because my last thing is, okay, we got to go to school, you know, we got to get home, get them dressed, get them ready to go to school. Mm -hmm. While I went there, we got the clothes, and then that's when I noticed that he was gone. Where did you, where did you and get clothes? At the room? Yeah, they're, they're, they're better. I didn't look at the door because I didn't really think, you know, maybe it's just there because he moved in or somebody moved in. And I mm -hmm. went in there and he was gone. Okay. Um, and you said you, did, you haven't seen the lock, you don't know where the lock is, you haven't seen the key. You guys haven't found those? Uh, we, found the, we found the key, we found the lock. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. The, the lock was thrown into the toys. The key was on the the lock was thrown back into the of his toys. Noah's. In the Noah's toys? Yeah, the same room? Yes, in the room. Okay. All the toys there. Was it a den or just a pile? Or? Just, um, there was, was a pile. Okay. And there's a pile and there's a bed, so. Gotcha. I'm not sure which one they found it in, so. Okay. And then. You or nobody else intentionally let that door knock or anything like that? No. Anything you want to Does anybody ever go back outside and smoke or anything like that? Like your aunt or Crystal? Crystal does. Crystal will go out to the smoke on the back door? Yes.
Ten minutes, just, I guess it's just a minute. Well, she's known sometimes she'll fall asleep out there. She'll fall asleep out there? Has she ever, uh, when she's come back in, does she normally lock it right back at that locker? Mm -hmm. Has she ever forgotten to lock it back? She's locked, she locks it. She makes sure that door stays locked. So there's never been a time where y'all have forgotten to lock it or just left it open for just a little bit by mistake? I usually check to make sure it's locked. Did, did you check it last night? No, but she did. Did you see her check it? I did not. Have you noticed anything missing today? Like any, like the backpack it is, or? Uh, we checked everything, and his stuffed animals here, the blanket is here, his backpack's here, there's nothing missing. No shoes, no socks, no clothing, there's nothing. Is there anything that he always likes to have on, like a little, you know, like a coin or something, you know, that he just has to have on that would be special to him? Yeah. Or nothing like that? Okay. Any no shoes, did you say? Yeah, no shoes. Um, no shoes missing? Yeah, there was no shoes missing. From, from his older brother, or did you check? His yeah, we checked. Yeah, we checked. There's all of her stuff, and there was nothing missing. So no shoes missing at all? Uh, no clothing? No, like, logins or gloves or anything like that? Nothing missing. No. Was he in his pajamas? Uh, yes. Yes. What did they look like? They're black, and have white, scale, white skeleton on it. Mm -hmm. Just on the front? Um, I believe it's also on the left as well. Is it are they footless or they have jammy the jammy footies type things or are they, they three speed out? Yes, we were out. Okay. Yeah. So you don't get socks on? No socks. So as far as you know, barefoot, yeah. black jammas, pants and shirt. Yeah. The skills thing he was asking about, was it I know it was on the front, but was it on the back too? No. Just on the front. Just on the front. You know, about about the pajamas, like in the dark, would you be able to see them at all? Or no? Were they reflected? Anything like that? No. Okay, not anything like you know how some are like low in the dark or have little lights flashing. Or yeah, they're they're not in the dark. It's just they're just white, just white. Yeah. Does he like school? That's a good question because sometimes he'll say, um, if I, you know, I say, you ready to go to school? No. You want to go to school? No. Or um, I'll ask him if he had a good day at school when he shakes his head like, like that sometimes. I don't know why. But, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, he had gone to school like normal. Yeah. Did he say it was a good day at school or anything that you recall? recall? I may have asked him, but he said no. That it, was, it wasn't a good day at school, and so he would have known he would have had to go back today, correct? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying why yesterday wasn't a good day. You know, he, he just said no. He just shook his head, and I was like, okay. Um, so I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something that he doesn't want to go back to school. Um, we've thought about homeschooling him. Because, you know, just, I guess just, just, just for safety. Uh, does he get picked on or anything there? I don't know. Okay, he just said safety, so I was just trying to think of safety as far as what? Like, my, one of my fears is like, when I went to work a lot, like, he would take off during, like, recess and they couldn't find him. That, has that ever happened to no. before? For a long time, I've actually had a like, legitimate fear that this would happen, unfortunately, because of his episodes of doing this. Just, and it's not like, you know, how to blue that deal. It's like constantly. Um, so. Has he said anything about wanting to go away somewhere or wanting to run back and not go to school or no. anything at all? Any 
place that he's wanted to go to where he's not been able to lately. Like, you know, if he's asked to go like, to the zoo or somewhere, and y'all be like, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you ever go, does your aunt ever go up? Well, I guess is it Crystal's aunt, Joyce? That's my Your aunt, aunt. does yeah. she go up back to on the back patio, or is it? Is it used pretty often in that patio? It, it is. Uh, they, and what's interesting about yesterday, you know what happened before we had that storm? Mm -hmm. They were out playing. You know about what time? Um, it was about 6 o'clock. They were out playing. They were having fun. Uh, they weren't fighting. Um, or anything like that. It was just... You know, I don't know why. You know about what time it stopped raining last night or it stopped storming? I don't know. Uh, I know it was light when I went to bed. Like, and when, when you got up and when you urinated in the floor, was it, did you hear any rain then? I didn't hear any, I didn't really hear any rain. Um, and I didn't see any lightning. Is he like playing out in the rain? No. Doesn't like. Well, we usually keep him inside, and the, um, so that when he won't be sick or whatnot, or outside in the rain. Oh, like thunder? Does lightning attract him? Does he like lightning or like thunder? We don't know. He's just never, he's never had a shot of fear of lightning or okay. thunder or anything like that. Doesn't have some any, any strong reaction to thunderstorms or anything no. like that that you can tell. He clearly doesn't like the storm. Yeah, he just doesn't react at all to it. So he's not like he doesn't love thunderstorms, but he doesn't like. He's not terrified of right. either. Right. Okay. Uh, anything outside that he really likes to do around here? He likes to um, play video games. Play video. Is there like a neighbor that has a video game system? I don't know. Has he ever gone out in the woods or anything like that around here? Uh, the backyard doesn't really have woods, but we've seen him go back there towards the, towards that area a lot. Like towards the wood line? Yeah. You know the last time you did that was? Maybe, did you do that last time when they were playing? No, it's been a while. I think it was maybe about, I don't know, we'll say a month ago. I don't know, it was, it was nice outside. It, was, it wasn't like rainy, it was sunny. Like the wood area across the, from the pond? Um, the, uh, there's a, it's a watch one back here. Yeah, one more one, yeah. And he, 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 yeah, he, he runs back there sometimes. And most of the time, that's where we sometimes see him a lot back there, so. And, um, or the neighbors or whatnot, so. How is he with, like, dark? Like, is he, is he terrified of, like, afraid of the dark? Or no. he, he likes, he, does he like darkness then? He, uh, <laughs> Um, 
I didn't see that, but I, that's what I heard. And um, apparently there was a, they, they said they were going to rent four. And the person said, uh, Jack said that the person with that rent four might have been someone they know. So and I don't know if there's something like, if they're trying to kidnap Joe because of what happened with Alex, because of the custody issue there. It, you, did you say it was resolved now? Yeah, yeah that, that, that happened like, it happened back in 2013, but I got to also remember that this person is not exactly what I would consider as a, a good person. And who was that again? Debbie, Debra Rose, De, her, it used to be Debbie Rosenbaum, used to be her name, but now it's like Debra Bybee. Have you ever seen her go to Joe's school or other, your other children's school or anything like that? Or no. Uh, has she called here lately? No, uh, we got all our numbers changed, mm -hmm. so uh, she has no contact with any of us here. We need to change her numbers. Um, my number, my house phone number's been the same, but I never gave that out. Okay. I, don't, I don't really give that out anyway, you know, unless it's something like the hospital needs to be nice to you, you know, stuff like that. Um, I don't you know, really like close friends that I have since like, I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I don't know if she's had any contact with anybody in this house recently. I, 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 I didn't think about that until they told me earlier about the right car, and I don't know if like, that person may have slept, like she may have seen him. Because I always pick him up and we'll get, you know, or something like that. She's not a good person. Most of the people around in this neighborhood are well, but they're, they're really good people. I, I've never had any kind of confrontation with anybody around here. So everybody around here has been nice to y'all? They yeah. have had any issues? Yeah. So I don't think, you know, I would not want to think anybody in this vicinity would be, um, would be that. I noticed that when I was looking on the registry, you know, you don't, I don't, you know, want to put, put that part into it, but there's a chance that might happen where a sex offender mm -hmm. might have picked them up. Do you know any sex offenders? I don't. Would Crystal know of any, or your family know of any? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, there was a, there's a guy at CCC Road, Manly Blue, that was sex offenders. On what road? CCC Road and Manly Blue. That's what I saw on the sex offender registry list. So I'm just giving out clues like, hey, could these people be the ones who kidnapped kidnap Joe if that is the case? Throughout the night, waiting to hear 
Zalta. I just, I got a few things. I, I talked to you this morning. Do you remember me? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's just there's just a few things that changed, I guess, from when I talked to you this morning to, to, to now. Yeah. There's been some new things that you've added that I didn't know about. Uh, yeah. I want to ask you about some of those. Yeah, it's been going on through the day, like just finding out, you know, possible information, just uh, from hearing from different people around, around the house about, you know, the red car or the yeah. you know, um, let me, let me just go ahead and I'll go through some of this information that, I, that I, it's either new or it's changed. Um, the incident where you're keeping the floor, nobody told me that this morning. How, if you're in here, it's 11.30, and the kid's peeing in the floor back there, how do you know it? I was woke up by Alex. After he's coming here screaming off what? Yeah, he came in here and said, Daddy, he's peeing the floor. Just peeing the floor. I was like, okay, hold on. So I, I got up and told him, you know, go back to bed. So he went back to bed. And... I know this has been, there's like so much going on right now. I'm trying to, you know. Um, where was Crystal when this happened? When he peed on the floor, she was in the bed. With you? Yes. Okay. Another thing that kind of... I'm, I'm, the change that was important for me was this morning you told me when you got the clothes and you started to go towards the boy's bedroom that you saw the coffee table being not in the same position that it was at, earlier right that you immediately looked at the door to see if the lock was on it just a minute ago you said you never looked at the door so which one which one is it I'm trying, trying to remember exactly. So I went back there, I got the clothes. And I went back to the living room. I said, okay, I put the clothes down. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The first, the, when I told you this morning was correct. I apologize. There's been so much going on. There's been so many police officers here. It's been, I, I don't know you guys are doing that. I still have a helicopter out there, so. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I apologize. It's just, uh, you said you didn't even look at the door, but you weren't, you, just, you weren't worried about it. Yeah, because normally that, you know, I wouldn't worry about something like that happening because, you know, normally the door is locked at night, and I never, when I saw that he wasn't in the bed, that's when I'm like, uh, I'm freaking out, I don't know what to do, so I went outside, got Crystal up, and Alex got out of the bed and came with us, and he, he got with me in the car after we, after me and Crystal went out and looked around and we couldn't find him. So Alice got with me in the car and we go around the, just, just this, this area through here as before. And then I couldn't find him, so I just called the police. How many times did you drive around the block before you called us? Once. Uh, another thing, the kids were outside at 6 o'clock at that plane? Yes. Uh, Y'all said this morning, 4 o'clock, everybody was inside, nobody went back outside. I remember a little bit more about yesterday, as the day has been going on, we're trying to figure out, you know, what could have triggered this. Because we were, we went, we were inside eating, and then we went outside, and they played a little bit, and then came back in, gave them their baths, put on their pajamas, and then 
Joe went back to the bedroom and he turned on the TV, put on Pocky View, and he went to sleep by 8 o'clock. type of boots that are available that he could wear, possibly wear like a muck boot, a rain boot, some kind of galoshes that are, that, that are not here, or is there any chance of that happening? No. Okay. So none of that type of shoes are here? No. Okay. Uh, You understand why well, I'm kind of curious as to why the stories change? Why yeah. I get new information or completely different information? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I just, I just, that's what we found. I understand that. We do too. Yeah, yeah, we do too. yeah. It's just throughout the day, you know, when you're first waking up, I'm, I'm actually a night person, so that's when I start, you know, remembering a lot of this stuff that's going on. I'm not really a daytime. My wife's the same way. She's so, a night owl. Grouch, we were intending to stop uh, court today at noon. I have 12, almost 12.15. I assume you're going to have questions for this witness afterwards, and we've made arrangements for the jury to be fed uh, north, um, quite a ways from here anyway. So is there any re anything that you need to accomplish with this witness before we adjourn for the day? All right, ladies and gentlemen, then uh, we're going to go ahead and adjourn for today and allow us to um, get you fed and get you accommodated so that you can have a, hopefully, a comfortable weekend. And we will. Now, counsel, I have some good news and some bad news. And I've talked with the jury. They're a very agreeable lot. And they've agreed that we could start court at 8 o'clock in the morning every day when we start court. And that's the bad news for you because. We're going to, is there any reason anyone knows of that we could not start court and, and conduct it uh, at 8 o'clock rather than waiting until 9 o'clock? That's fine. We can, Monday will be flexible enough, but I would like to start at 8 if possible so that we could try to accomplish as much. Um, these folks are on Eastern Standard Time, so they're all their body clocks are all operating where they're they're awake and raring to go by that time, and I'd like to accommodate that. And so, why don't we uh, plan on uh, Monday? We'll we'll all be here at eight o'clock, and if we have any issues with witnesses, we'll you know whatever we'll do, uh, we'll do whatever we need to to accommodate that. But. If we do that at eight, then we'll probably go to a five or a little later, but not necessarily go to six o'clock from eight o'clock. Eight to five will be a full day, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to step back in the jury room, then we will get you transported for your lunch. Oh, and if you will turn those, uh, go ahead and turn those transcripts in to the bailiffs as you come out, just put them there on the thing, and we'll give them back to you Monday when we can return. Council, we will lock this courtroom and it will be secure. As you know, the courthouse will be secured over the weekend in case you want to leave anything here, but that's entirely your decision. So. Agent Kennard, if you want to step down, you can do so. So what is your schedule for next, for Monday? <clears throat> uh, I'm subpoenaed for a hearing at 10 o'clock in Davidson County. And who's the judge? Uh, judge Watkins. Okay, Monty? Yes, sir. Watkins, okay. Is that the Delkey case? Yes, sir. Okay. And it actually been pushed back for 
a conflict previous this week as well. Right. So. And do you know how long your testimony is expected to be or how long you'll be in that case? I do not, sir. I would imagine in an hour or two. And I have emailed one of the attorneys in that party letting him know we were going to call the agent tomorrow yesterday. Do you just want to figure out which one of us is going to put you in jail because you're not in our court? So. Um, well, let me let me ask this: Is it? Well, I hate to not take him up. I mean, I'll take him up at eight o'clock in the morning Monday, and I don't know how much longer you've got with him if he can make it to Nashville. If he leaves here by nine o'clock, you can make it to Nashville. Judicial economy purposes, uh, we are going to release Agent Kennard. Uh, I've agreed to not ask any further questions on direct. We'll agree to everybody across. Well, it seems like that solves all your problems. We're going to uh, essentially terminate, and I will explain that to the jury when they return. That will terminate Agent Kennard's uh, requirement to be here, and uh, with that, we'll release him from his subpoena and let him go about his business. And so. before we do that, though, I would move the transcript as the next the transcript exhibit. will be marked as the next exhibit in order, which would be what? I'm lost track. 126. Yeah. And, Judge, just for the record, I, I still think I'm winning in the number of times I can say judicial economy in this trial. All right. All right. Then that will conclude our business today, and we will stand adjourned until Monday morning at 8 o'clock. All rise. Court is adjourned. Recording stopped. Sorry.